your case? Oh, my case is still the passion of today is a rather young patient, uh, uh, not so young, 60 years old. Und so ein Eis he is suffering from uh, progressive uh, hearing loss. Progressive congenital hearing loss. But now the, uh, the hearing aid doesn't Eis work Eis anymore. And uh, this patient was referred to me for nee, a one side cochlear implant, the right side yeah. cochlear implant. It is was made together, together so by the, the, the family. So so for me today, and I thank you to give me the opportunity to participate to this yeah, meeting. Is that that I'm this patient would well, like to present the new group in Florence because today is all yeah. something like celebration yeah. day because uh, I am now I'm Thank going you. to get the chairman of the ENT department in Florence Pediatric Hospital and uh, for a great, great honor and I would like to all my all the new team uh, today I have completely new team I would like to thank all this team uh, to give me this support uh, to create uh, in few days, the I would like a conference because uh, they are not to do this kind of conference. They are not to do this uh, kind of surgery. I started today, so uh, now uh, I'm going to to do the surgery. But uh, waiting for your connections, uh, uh, I was working uh, at your excellent surgery that you showed today during the different and LC cochlear implantation. Uh, I start a little bit before my surgery because probably Le it ver. could be bored if I repeat all the landmarks that you already seen today. I start my surgery before I'm ready for the insertion, but what I would, I would like to give, give you uh, just uh, some uh, pitfall technique uh, reference that I did after 25 years experiencing during these 20 Five years, five years. Change, change a lot in the change a lot in search, in search, in technology. And uh, now I'm going to show you my work that we discussed together about surgical pitfalls. About is a great. Okay, good, good. Okay, that in me la put it into la shalitica. So, first of all. I remember when I was a uh, very young student, I was at the beginning of 90, when I was in, in Venice with Professor Babigan, we start our experience in 1991. We did a, a huge incision. I don't know if you remember this incision. I was a young doctor and students cannot uh, never see this uh, incision, but we start oh, a I'm big and sure. incision. I'm Just sure. more than 15, 20 centimeter incision. But now it is a great thanks to the technology. Our implants are a little smaller, uh, thinner, thinner, and then you see for say you see is a four five the red or equal here really smaller respectively to twenty years ago. And also is uh, really more acceptable. Especially, you can imagine in bilateral colony implantation, one year old child, two so huge incision in the heads uh, could be no more acceptable. So, first of all, the incision changed dramatically. And then, uh, uh, I will start with the microscope to the show you some microscope dramatically uh, about my surgery with connections. Dammi per favore il divaricatore, quello grande. Autosar statico grande. Ok, perfetto. Laviamo. Da, dammi quell'altro divaricatore. So, we put the retractor, just one in this case, it's ok. So, in this 20 it's ok. So, so first of all, we perform the me. First of all, we perform the first part of mastodectomy. Part of with a microscope to have uh, a larger field under control. 
the main main implantation the rules when I deal always when I try to deal and masturbate to me are the bar larger as possible. I start with a six millimeter cutting bar. Not high speed, I don't like high speed drill. Maximum, maximum 40,000 minutes of speed. And then first of all, I look at the segment, Dura first. So bar larger as possible, Dura first. Because when I open the hand room, you see the lateral semicircular canal, the incus of the fascia is over there, and uh, as you see, all the landmarks are positioned, are located anteriorly and uh, inferiorly to the floor of the entrance. So I am never go, I never gone to the entrance following the uh, L line following uh, the spin area because I like to go to the antro from anterior and inferior. If you follow, if you met the dura first, you are sure even in difficult even when uh, the antro is completely filled by disease right. of cholestatoma, you can go in the antro posterior uh. superiorly. So means uh, that you go the antro. Hello, do you hear? You see, here yes. is Grenoble. Yes. Excuse me, can yes. you hear me at the headquarter? Yes, yes, I can hear you. And can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so... Yes, Sebastian again, from Gunnarsin again. Yeah, uh, so... Can you image? Yeah. Can you hear me well? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, at the beginning, it is always mandatory for me, as I told you before, to find the tegment and the position dura because I like to go in the hand in room in posterior, superior, posterior and superiorly to be sure that I have the maximum distance from the main landmark. I have never go to the hand room in front anterior and inferior because if you go there following the hell spine as a report in some in many anatomical books you go directly over the lateral canal and go directly over the second gene of the facial nerve so please do the first and you have the safest access to the end the third rules like uh, i remember so during okay. the the tools that the third uh, please go plane by plane. Don't do hole in your field. And especially, please uh, skeletonize very well the tegmen and also do a very thin posterior bony wall that is uh, very nice when you need a rather large field in uh, posterior tympanotomy. Now, as soon as you found the hand room, dammi da lavare, dammi da lavare, dammi da sfruttare sul piccolo. Un petit champ. One moment, I change the suction tube. Was a little bit bleeding, my story, because we remove some inflammatory mucosa, mucosa that very often is, uh, it can be found very from the mess very often at the end of the winter season. Young patient. Now, I remove some uh, cloth. Franco, just while you're um, preparing things, we're just going to switch over to Grenoble. Yes. And then we will come Thank back you. to you. So yes. I just want to show you. So, so now I'm ready to to put the implant. Here's the vibrant sun bridge with the these two lateral arms, then you just, with these kits, this is to fix it, and the, here are the screws, three screws, Sebastian, one in case of... Just going to, Sebastian, we're coming back to you, yeah. we're just going to um, uh, get yes, the Yes, okay.
Okay, okay. I'm waiting for you. Do. Yes, yes. So, Florence again, now we are just uh, explaining. So, just. Uh, so, we, uh, as you know, we have Mel Lerman Ladder at Semicircular Canal, that is uh, our, like uh, the polar star in our anatomy, and then the incus and the facial nerve. When we are doing the posterior tympanotomy, that is the most important surgical anatomical exercise in this kind of uh, operation. Of course, as you know, we That's follow the lateral semicircular canal and the short process of the incus. And uh, like in this case, you see the corda tympan is, is over there. So facial is here because I see the white, white shadow of the epineurion. And, uh, but I don't need to enlarge too much my posterior tympanotomy today. I can what? see the anterior border of the round window. I can see, I put in focus better for, I can see the stapes, uh, the tendon of the stapes, and uh, very published with Vilko, uh, Moni Digma, I see you are here, you are there, and that there is not significant difference, especially in cases like this patient with almost no residual hearing, he perform a round window niche or promontorial copiostomy insertion. Uh, today, I stopped this uh, to enlarge this uh, posterior tympanotomy. I see because for, for promontorial cochleostomy is uh, more than enough. And uh, if you, another pitfall, another if you see in the main book, they, uh, they advise, uh, please do uh, promontorial cochleostomy anteriorly and inferior to the anterior danum peak of the round window niche. For me, it's completely wrong because this is the anterior margin, the anterior lip of the round window niche. If you do anterior inferior okay. cochleostomy, you finish to drill inside um, I put in panic cells so even in case in which uh, we cannot see the round window in case of malformation once uh, you are very well localized the facial nerve I use uh, as a main landmark for my my uh, cochleostomy my the incus and the step I do it one millimeter approximately here inferior to the Tendon. So this is approximately one and a half millimeter. And then at 20 years ago, when the, the electrodes uh, were very large, at that time we took about a very slim, but now we consider the previous electrode very large. I do it with the rather large uh, drill, two millimeters diamond drill, in order okay. to re remove uh, more of the promontory and then to see the white spot of the endostomy. But now with so slim uh, electrode, I must use a one millimeter diamond bar because it's the only way to ensure an appropriate insertion. Like in this case. See? See? So, Fr Franco, we, lo we lost your sound for a while, but now we're back with it. Yeah, okay. Lava. So, this is it. Lava. Okay. Okay. Okay, dammi per favore un dammi un prepara aspetta, dai. So
O Screw Rich. Sì, sì. Vabbè, caspita, un millimetro, vai. Cosa stanno vedendo adesso? Dov'è? Cosa stanno vedendo adesso? Ok. I'm a line. Fabif. Fabif. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I did my cochleostomy. I'm sure that I have the basal tar and the scala tympan of the basal tar. Now I ask the nurse, please prepare the implant. Today we use a uh, ah, synchrony cochlear implant. And I like to do it also for the compatibility with the MRI. As you know, today is a normal case, a normal anatomy patient. is not a syndromic patient, not a polymalformed patient. But very often, we are referred center for syndromic patient. We do young child, not only difficult the surgery point of view, but ch children, in, we, in where we will are sure that we will ask for an MRI, at least uh, several MRI in life. So, so to have more compatible is the MRI and is uh, for us. And this is the MRI. Today we use uh, a flex. Yeah. The flex meters length will uh, implant the first and the second tar of the cochlea in this selector. Now, they are prepared the implant for me because uh, I ask uh, to open the implant only when I'm sure that yeah. I have found the, the tympanic scale, of course, not before. Uh, this is true, of course, not before, especially in case of malfunction, when uh, you must be sure that you are yeah. in position to implant this cochlea. Uh, pronto l'impianto? Okay. Impianto, they told me it's ready. So let me thank my my Dr. Pierossi. He's uh, the responsible for head and neck surgery in uh, an otolaryngology in uh, Florence uh, Pediatric Hospital. Oh, and we will work together okay. for a lot of hospital fears now because uh, we officially start in this time this new experience. Uh, let me also thank uh, also the Sian University Hospital to permit me to carry on in uh, the surgery of adults patients. So since now we will operate children and uh, at least for this year adults in, in Siena. Siena to Florence are 71 in Siena. A common team to organize in the best way and especially in the safest way our job. I like to operate, I like to <laughs> very young, young today is normal, but I like to operate uh, syndromic, uh, problematic young children in the pediatric hospital. Because, because in pediatric hospital, I have not only the pediatric, all the pediatric facilities, you see, anesthesiologist is a very, is a very expert in difficult cases, uh, the nurses, uh, and uh, also the neurosurgeon, because we are in the same department. I would like to thank also for his uh, very close light operation, Dr. Lopez-Nitori, that is the department of neurosurgery of this hospital. Now, we prepare for the insertion of the implant. No, la, quella dorata. We approximate uh, the tip of the electrode. Okay. And then very careful and delicately we put the electrode inside. Aspiratore. No, aspetta, aspiratore. There is some debris. Okay. One moment, we try again. I don't want, usually I don't suction over the, the cochleostomy, but 
this case there is not any residual healing to be served. Okay. It's always very easy, but of course, we are in direct connection. Always the hip makes some. Yeah, I, I, I use the Flex 28 uh, as my yeah. standard med yeah. standard rate and can be quite difficult to maneuver because it's so but high. Usually, it's rather easy. Is today because we have indirect connection, don't something could be could happen always, but uh, in any case, is a rather not easy today. We put the tip, tip. Ah. there is some bleeding. Why? Because uh, I remove a lot of uh, aspirare. Franco, we're of just going to very quickly go to Grenoble and then we'll come back to you. Then, then, then. Yes. See you later. Okay. Uh, Cialitic, si vous plaît. okay, now. No, Franco, we're with you again. I think now the insertion is complete. The reason because that some difficult at the beginning is because probably I did a very small cochleostomy as some bony, probably I did the spine was on the cochleostomy. As bony spine immediately the insertion has been complete. Of course now I put to seal in the cochleostomy with some muscle and then I asked uh, Dr. Sergio Panizza, we are honored to have uh, you in, with us today, Sergio, because he's the general director of uh, this company in Italy, and it's very rarely, almost never, he considered me when I operate, but today, for this occasion, he will do personally the telemetry. So now, as you know, with the telemetry, we Alors test the hip, and then je pas... uh, we will wow. close uh, layer by layer with the resolvable suture. Franco, so, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you later. Okay.